referred to the bargaining chamber. Delegates will be voting later today for that of the Deputy Secretary General position, which is being contested by Sali Peto, the Provincial Secretary of Kasatu uh, Northwest, as well as Denosa's Paka Oscar. Well, for more from the Congress, let's uh, cross now live to our reporter, Tomole Mohladi. Tomole, good afternoon to you. Um, it's been interesting to see the dynamics of this Congress play out from day one till now. So uh, we've seen Labour Minister Mildred Oliphant on the podium today. What held sway in her address? Well, the Labour Minister, uh, Mildred Oliphant, was very clear in her call, basically calling for employers uh, to do away with uh, labour brokers. I think this was one of the strongest messages. We know for the longest while that this has been uh, a crusade that uh, Kosatu has been waging uh, since uh, the turn of uh, the millennium, even further to the uh, turn of uh, democracy, uh, to the beginning of democracy in 1994, uh, when the Labour Federation would bring hundreds of thousands out to the streets, doing away with uh, so-called casualization at that point, which was then followed on by the labor broking system. And uh, for more on that, I'm joined now live uh, by the Labor Minister, Mildred Oliphant. Minister, thank you very much for speaking to us. You spoke here to Kosatu, firstly on the issue of labor brokers. What is government's stance and what needs to be done to do away with it? Uh, in terms of the government's stance, we have said let us prohibit the abusive by the labor brokers. And uh, at the same time, if you look at the way we have crafted the legislation, we have dealt uh, away with the issues of casualization in particular that was created by the labor brokers. And therefore, I would say, in fact, there is a progress on that one. But at the same time, the issues that I raised here was that the trade unions themselves must look at their own houses because some of them, they have invested in the same companies that are using the labor brokers. And in some agreements, they have allowed a situation where they are saying uh, the labor brokers must continue in those uh, industries that they have organized. So the question is, if you say we must ban labor brokers, what about them who are working with them, who have partnered with some of the companies that are still using the labor brokers? So I said before they take some decisions, they have to look at what exactly they are doing. And I, I have even said to the leadership of the Federation, maybe they have to investigate where the members of, the, of their affiliates have made their investments and in particular where there are still labor brokers before they take any decision to act against that. Madam Minister, are you prepared to name and shame those particular unions that you're referring to who at the same time while calling for fair labor practices here at the Congress are behind the scenes working with the same uh, evil that they are decrying? Uh, the president, of course, had to say, no, I must not declare them because I have given them the opportunity to investigate. So probably if I mention them, then it will, be jo it will jeopardize their investigation. So that is why I have decided not to mention any trade union. And I think when the time comes, after they have exposed them, that's when probably we can go further and discuss who are those and what exactly are they doing. Right. And uh, what kind of uh, punitive measures can we expect to see uh, from government side on the companies uh, if uh, uh, you decide to follow up on the, doing away with labor brokers? Uh, the, the law is very clear, is that whoever is an employer, because that's what labor brokers are, are, are claiming, that whoever is an employer must employ the people in terms of the labor laws of this country. So everybody must comply. It's not a matter of choice. So I was saying to the workers, they are the first ones to monitor the compliance within the working space. And then even if we have our own program of inspection, we will do it with the federations as agreed previously. And therefore it's not really now an issue of the government. The first point of call is the trade unions themselves. Madam Minister, you also touched on the very contentious and very divisive issue of e-tolls. Uh, what was your message to Kosatu, which has been very vocal that uh, e-tolls must fall? Uh, I said to them, look, yes, we do agree, but there are two issues that I, I have mentioned. One of them is ESCOM and the other one is e-tolls. 
I said, look, they have to look also there because my understanding is that they have also have the investment on those particular industries. Even the issue in terms of the e-tolling, some of them, they are part of it. So I said they must investigate that one as well. And then therefore they must review their program on these particular issues. So whoever is organizing them, because I think somehow there are people who are misleading the workers. And I was even saying, in terms of what they are saying publicly that should that that should work together with the issues of saying they are fighting corruption because when you fight corruption it's not only about finances it's also about corrupting the mind of the ordinary citizens that is the worst corruption ever and therefore that is why i was appealing to say they must investigate these things before they make any calls in terms of that Madam Minister, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much, as always, for speaking to us. Uh, that was uh, the Labour Minister just basically outlining uh, that, based from her point of view, as far as government's concerned, uh, Trade Union Federation Kosati can't be both referee and player, whereby they are calling for uh, an end to e-tolls. But at the same time, their member affiliates have interests in terms of shareholdings in companies which are, of course, running and administering the e-tolls themselves. And uh, this is the situation as we stand here at uh, the Congress of uh, Trade Union Federation, Kosatu, with that respect to you in the studio. Tumole, thank you very much. Our reporter Tumole Makhladi live from Kosatu's National Congress in Madrid. We will, of course, try and bring you updates coming up in your news at 1.